Hello, and thank you for joining. We are Metascale, the premier provider of big data solutions and services. Today we're going to get into the topic of data science. We're going to look at machine learning with sensor data. In the big data world, there's a lot of information moving around. And I'd like to talk about truly machine learning based approaches that focus in on how we can leverage this big data sensor data um, for analytics research. So the landscape is rapidly evolving. Data is coming from a wide variety of sources. A lot of people are now talking about the Internet of Things, where sensors are going to be picking up information from a wide variety of platforms. We now want to bring all of this information in together. So what we're going to do is we're going to showcase how a data scientist would work with this type of information and how we can leverage it for analytics-based initiatives in your big data platform. Uh, you know, one way to think about the sensor information is related to uh, smartwatch devices. So when you're sitting down, now after you've been sitting for a certain period of time, you get an alert that says, hey, it's time to stand. We can see this in this particular image here. So the sensors on your smartphone are transmitting information which are being processed and sending back to the smart devices. And what I'd like to do is show you exactly how this works and how we can use machine learning to solve this particular problem. To do so, we're going to use uh, a data set called the Human Activity Recognition Using Smartphones, which was pulled from the UCI Machine Learning Repository. And what this data is showing is it's from a Samsung Android-based smartphone with a built-in accelerometer. And through this accelerometer, certain types of activities were recorded, whether or not a participant was sitting down with the smartphone in their pocket, whether they're walking upstairs, they're standing, they're lying, uh, etc. But there are six different types of activities that were recorded. So when you look at a data set from a data scientist point of view, you have columns of information. And all the way on the right hand side of this inf information, which could be hundreds, thousands, or tens of thousands of columns, we have a class label. And this class label represents whether or not um, that particular row was standing, sitting, laying, laying, etc. So in these smartphones, we have different types of sensors. We have gyroscopes measuring rotation of a device. We have the accelerometer, which is measuring how fast a person is moving um, you know, in any of the three spatial dimensions. And all of this information is being recorded and transmitted. Now that we talked a little bit about what we're trying to accomplish, we're trying to essentially make the prediction of you know, whether or not a person is standing or sitting you know, based off of the sensor information. I want to show a little bit of our code to show us how to actually get to that result. So you load a couple different packages that have the algorithms that you're working with. In this case, we're going to run an artificial neural network and a deep learning framework on through a third-party provider. So we're going to bring in the data, and then we're going to make some changes to the data, essentially just making sure that the data is prepped for our algorithms. Well, the first algorithm we're going to run is an artificial neural network. And the way that this algorithm works is it first trains the network based off of the data, then it evaluates the performance, and then it feeds back uh, information through a mechanism called backpropagation. So essentially we're creating what's called a feed-forward artificial neural network with backpropagation that is averaging all of the results to create a prediction. So without getting into the specifics, just understand that at the end of the day we're going to be predicting whether or not a person is standing or sitting and we're using a mechanism that simulates the way a human brain operates. So it's a very powerful tool, um, and it will create a prediction that we can evaluate. Once the algorithm is done training, and it goes through this looping process a couple different times, uh, we can evaluate the performance. And that's what we're going to do here. So once I evaluate the performance, there are certain metrics that we would look at. And one is what's called a confusion matrix. And in this particular metric, we see that the accuracy of this neural network was 57.14%. So not a particularly strong prediction, um, but it just shows you the power of what we can use with machine learning. Now what we will focus on is 
building a more modern technique for artificial neural networks that really takes us to the forefront of machine learning and data science. So the, the algorithm that we're going to use is what's called a deep learning framework or a deep neural network. And in this case, the way that we're going to process the information is we're going to send the data to a third party source which will handle the actual computational aspects of the algorithm. Because it can be quite extensive, it's better to offload it to the third party in this case. So we prepare our data, we send it out, they do the processing, typically in, in a parallel form, and then send us back the results. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this deep learning framework. So once the model has been executed, we can evaluate the performance characteristics and see how it performs. So by doing so, we now see that our deep learning framework has an accuracy of 70.31%, which is much better than the artificial neural network. And in our demonstration, we very simply trained a deep learning framework. If you were to put this in production and deploy it across your organization, these algorithms require a lot of information. So a deep learning model in a big data environment is very well suited for a lot of analytical needs. And as you can see from a machine learning standpoint, it is a very powerful model. I'm absolutely convinced if we continue to train this model, we can get the accuracy up even higher, provided we have more data and more resources to process. Thank you very much for joining us today. We are Metascale, the premier provider of big data services and solutions. We want to be your one-stop big data helpline. If you're interested in our products and services, please feel free to check us out at www.metascale.com or contact us through the telephone number or email address listed below. Thank you very much and have a nice day.